gradual, but I'm sure it's everywhere. My experience with student pressure is a, a little bit different. Uh, students are aware that you're not necessarily a full-time faculty member if you're someone like me. And there, although I have multiple lines on my face and my hair is falling out of my head, I still look relatively young compared to some of my colleagues. And so, <laughs> and up until May uh, of this year, I didn't have a PhD yet. Um, so students felt fairly free um, to pressure me or to put me into situations where they would really challenge if I was 100% sure of what I was doing. And there's one particular incident that comes to mind. I was teaching a small uh, seminar-based course. There were eight students, and 30% of their grade was just based on their level of participation, and another 30% of their grade was based on how they delivered an hour and 20-minute lecture in the course. And so I had a very clear rubric, I believed, and then there was this big negotiation about, well, what is just what is this, or what does that mean, or what do I really have to do? And, and, at, and at some academic level, I'm like, well, you have to kind of do what I want you to do, but they really wanted it spelled out so well. So that's fine, and I, I work with them, and I'm willing to jump over these hoops to have a, a, a smooth course, if you will. And so one particular student, uh, got a mark of an A minus. That's a pretty good mark. I, I thought, so, you know, it was A minus quality work. Yeah, that's pretty good. Very upset. Lowest mark, and I don't know how you think you can give me this mark, and I've spoken to, in the email, I've spoken to at least one other student who feels your grading was inconsistent with the rubric, and I hope you take this advice in the future, uh, maybe when you're grading our class papers. And so I'm thinking, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Slow down here. And it, it, it was kind of a defining moment for me in the year because I could have been completely, well, I'm sorry you're upset with your mark. If you'd like to discuss it, maybe because there's something actually you could do to get a better mark. But I was very clear in my response of, I totally disagree with your assessment, and I'm quite shocked by this statement, but I'm most willing to hear you out in person about how, how you feel about what has happened. And there was no reply, and we went out for the rest of the year. But one of my pieces of advice around this is there was an email exchange of a few messages and I had done a series of steps to sort of put this thing together. I kept that exchange in case some grievance was made or some complaint or so, I didn't know what it was going to turn into. And I still have those emails saved but I'll probably keep them for a couple of years just in case. But I was, I, I thought I had to really cover my tracks being in a fairly junior position that I'm in. But that issue of student pressure and, I want my students to be happy and they're going to be evaluating me and I know that this person's discontent, even though I'm doing all these things that it says in my evaluation, I know I'm going to get hit on these things, just let it go. I just, I just said, this is the way that's right for me and that's what I stuck to. So that's one particular example of student pressure that stands out for me. I'm sure others have other experiences. In some ways I like the new activism that is emerging. I mean, we want our students to be engaged, critical, uh, willing to ask questions, challenge the authorities, and you know, I happen to be in that context, one of the authorities that I'm inviting them to challenge, and that's pretty, you know, ironic. But there does seem to be, uh, you know, in turn, I, I, th I think the various issues you're, you're raising cover a, a really wide spectrum, and in some ways, that notion of handing over part of the course to students is quite helpful, you know. I'll go in and say, I want these components. These ones are going to be coming from you as individuals. They have to make up at least 50% of the course. These are other activities I'm going to require you to do. How do you want them weighted? You know, and if the class is small enough, they can weight them individually. If they're collective, the large classes, then they'll, they'll weight them. You know, and then it's their decision. And if they do badly on a debate or a seminar and they complain about the fact that it's worth 25%, they're the ones who chose it. You know, so they, they have a chance to challenge, but they have to be held accountable for the decisions that they make. And it is a hard one. You know, when students come weeping, as they always do in an English course, you know, I've never gotten a D before. Um, in some ways, I think you're, you're right, your, your response to stand firm and say, this is why, this is a D paper, is important to be able to explain, and then know that know this, whatever system your university has. I love our university system in particular. 
gives students an appeal process. So if they really don't like my grade, they can take it to the department. <coughs> if they don't like the departmental grade, they can take it to the faculty. So as soon as I can in the process, I'll start copying the chair in so that at least the students know you know, there is a process, they can participate in it, but be aware you're talking to several people now. So if this changes your tone a little bit and you become a little less, you know, how dare you because you know the chair is now listening to you, um, it lets them become a little more responsible as speakers to us. But there are a lot of different issues being raised there and some of them, you know, the students are very likely to want more than we are willing to give them as the people who are ultimately being paid to tell them whether they're passing a particular standard or not. And it's hard to know exactly when we have to step forward and say, no, this, this is non-negotiable. You know, this is a D paper. And that is what it's going to get. And, I'm sorry. I wonder if I could speak to that just a little bit, which is to say, it, it, maybe it's not specific to your individual questions, but one of the things that, that I felt as a new faculty member was a great deal of anxiety. Anxiety over, you know, syllabus, the course evaluation, you know, the probationary appointment and the possibility for renewal in the midst of all these other things. Will this paper be accepted or rejected? Whatever. So, you know, anxiety. You could, you could smell it in the air. I'd certainly, you know, at any job market at a big convention where all the graduate students assembled, you know, this was charged as an atmosphere. And in the classroom, you know, uh, I wouldn't want a job like this if I didn't like being in the classroom. But the flip side of that is anxiety, because the classroom is a place that can provoke a tremendous amount of anxiety. Again, it depends on the size of the class, the experience of the students, the subject area required course or not, you know, all these other variables. But that said, one of the things that, that uh, I stumbled across, for me, by accident, I didn't have the chance to steal this from someone, but in the classroom, one of the things that diffused a tremendous amount of anxiety for me relatively early on was stepping sort of sideways, figuratively anyway, uh, in especially big first-year classes and saying, okay, there's the syllabus. It's this external thing. It's this thing I brought to class. Now I want to have a meta-conversation about what the, what the pedagogical objectives are behind the pieces of this course. So you know where I'm coming from. The idea that you're going to do this precy of a reading, here's why I want you to do a precy of the reading, and here's why this applies to you know, good work habits and practices, to comprehensive understanding, to all these other kinds of things. There are other ways of getting there, so negotiably we can make the precy something else, but it has to hit this objective. Maybe a history course, but this is my pedagogical objective for that. Stepping aside and saying, I want you to do some small research project. Why? Because you have to get inside the library. In my subject area, it's a literature field, you have to know how to work a library catalog. You know, if you're ever going to take a second year course or a third year course in the discipline. So the stuff that, that provoked anxiety earlier in trying to get them to do the work, uh, you know, I figured out a way to sidestep that, that sort of resentment that you're having us do all these frustrating things by qualifying for them what these objectives were. I have no background in educational theory or what have you, but this just seems like, shall we say, if not a common enemy, then a common project. And so how can we both get there? If you need some help as students to figure out how to best accomplish these goals that are in the syllabus, great. We can. So it was looking for ways to kind of collaborate with students, but also explain why that's there, rather than stand behind the authority that this is your contract and you have to satisfy this with me.